Welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show, where we once again try to make sense of this crazy Arizona housing market. Welcome, welcome. So we're looking at uh, some numbers out there that are kind of changing. And before we get started, uh, I want to let you know that if you hit the like button today, your cell phone battery will last all day. It's just another effort of YouTube to improve your life. So, um, you know, be sure and smash that like button. But welcome. So a lot of numbers changing. Good morning, Jackie. Good to see you. Um, you know, the, the numbers don't change very fast. Good morning, Lewis. Um, they, they don't change very fast in the real estate market. And as you watch some of my past videos, as things change and interest rates go up and everything, if we're expecting a shift in the real estate market, there are certain numbers that we need to pay attention to. And I'm going to go through those again today. We're just going to review where we're at, what's changed, and what hasn't. Because if you're going to make a decision in buying and selling, you have to be aware of the numbers and be aware of the trends your, yourself. Um, instead of relying, you know, calling a realtor and going, hey, is it a good time to buy? You know, I don't know. <laughs> good time to sell. I'm going to show you some examples on realtor.com here too as well. But uh, first thing, here's what hasn't changed. We've only got 4,800 listings today. And that's, you know, kind of been where Thursday's been hanging out for a while. But if you look at the seven-day moving average that I track, see this yellow arrow here that's last year the same week last year and you can see that the number of contracts pretty much kept up for the num with the number of new listings that came on board well not so much today you can see that new listings that come up but sales have have dipped but not by a lot don't get too excited it's you know maybe 500 units um so you know people have been kind of kicked out of buying so some of the numbers that we want to look at that we want to follow is you know, you're not going to see any price changes until pending listings consistently drop. And you can see here that they have dropped, uh, but not consistently. They're down. So could this be a downtrend? That's what we're going to have to watch. And then contingencies have to go up. And they're not yet. So contingencies are, I'll buy your house as soon as I sell yours. Nobody's going to accept that in this hot of a market. So that number is going to have to climb. And it isn't. And under contract... That is starting to dip. So little cracks in the armor there that we're seeing. Nothing major. We are seeing uh, mortgage applications uh, come down a little bit. Mortgage applications. Let's see. I've got it here somewhere. There we are. Purchase applications. Here's our current level. We're down here. But we've been down there before in, in 2021. And uh, so there's nothing really changing there. But you are starting to see more and more news that, you know, that repeat the same thing. The purchase applications are declining. Here we go. We're going to crash. Jackie says, it feels like the big investment firms are not hitting my listings as much as last year. I hope that's the case. Although I have had a conversation with a gentleman that's, you know, debating whether or not to list his house. And he, man, he got an offer from OfferPad that's, or Open Door, that to me is just absolutely unbelievable. And, uh, you know, we're going back and forth. And I said, take it. <laughs> you know, just now you gotta the thing about open door these eye buyers if you accept the offer you, you don't have any upfront money so you're not risking anything and if you decide you want to back out of the deal nobody else sees that number so whatever they offered you that's not transparent it's not going to show up why not take the offer let them come inspect your house and then see what they come up with because they're going to hit you with some money they want at back at the close of escrow at that point you can say i'm out and then list your house so it's worth it now i would advise you um because open door is not going to reach out to you unless you reach out to them first i mean they're going to send you emails hey you thinking of selling but go ahead and have the real estate agent submit your house for you because when it comes to inspection time uh we're pretty good at getting them to adjust their dollar amounts as a real estate agent so I have a comment says it rates up if we got our house at 2.87 we will will we ever be able or want to refi or will rates always make it a bad deal in the future my crystal ball is broken i don't know a lot of chatter going on that's saying that rates are <clears throat> going to continue to climb 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 and they may come down and so you know who knows and but i think you're part of what we're seeing here is that people locked in you know 2.85 and they go well, i'm not going anywhere i'm not moving so realtor.com says 
Um, the good news for housing markets so far, home buyer demand has held up in the face of skyrocketing mortgage rates. Data on mortgage applications from the Mortgage Brokers Bankers Association shows the number of applications for loans used to purchase homes has only slightly declined. That's true, as compared with a major downturn in the number of refinancing applications. So that's saying that that's a major shift for the mortgage industry since the start of COVID-19 pandemic. Lenders were able to rely on a steady stream of refinances to keep their business afloat. 43% of their business was refis. And now it's at a three-year low. So many lenders are going to be looking to make up for lost refinancing business. That provides them with some impetus not to raise rates as quickly as they might otherwise do so. That remains to be seen. The other thing I advise you when you're looking at um, sites like Realtor.com is <clears throat> they're what I'm going to call it or an industry insider. You're never going to see a headline from them that says, now's the time you sell your house because things are going to get ugly. You'll never see that. You won't see that on Zillow. You won't see that on Realtor.com. You won't hear that from the National Association of Realtors. Nobody's ever going to shout from the rooftop and say, get out, get out. So that's why we track the numbers here and we look and see if there's any signs way before they hit the headlines here that say, you know, this is looking kind of weird here. So I kind of like going through Redfin a little bit too. And Redfin shows market insights uh, from Phoenix real estate agents. So it's and this is what's going on here. This is real world. You'll see it right here. They have a $550 offer and the guy says it's a winning offer. 3% over list price, 11 days on the market with only one competing offer. But check this one out. 425, offer not accepted. It sold for 475 at 3% over the list price, only on the market four days. More than 25 competing offers. So you think the market's slowing down? It doesn't look like it. $600,000 offer, not accepted. Now all these people are in their car, they're showing homes, they're writing offers, they ain't making a dime. 11% over the list price. Holy Toledo. And it says um, there were four competing offers. So they offered six hundred, but somebody else they accepted another six hundred thousand dollar offer. <clears throat> the details aren't here. Nine hundred thousand sold for nine fifty. Three competing offers. Three seventy five sold for two percent over. Three competing offers. And kind of fun to go through that and look at the boots on the ground with those gentlemen. Bryce says, "What was the term for that type of housing you saw where it was a single family?" Uh, Single-family residents with built-in studio for parents or health care. Uh, those are called next-gen, next-gen homes. Uh, I was curious to study that and see if it was allowed where ADUs were frowned on. Um, the next-gen homes uh, really don't, you know, <clears throat> ADUs are like a separate little casita in the back or something, and that depends on the city, depends on their code. But as far as next-gen homes, that's just a separate part of the home that just has a door uh, and they have an outside entrance, so they don't have to walk through your living room to get to their living quarters. They've got their own. Uh, there's some really nice ones down in Chandler built by Lennar Homes. And those things don't come up very often. They come up and they get scooped up. Um, so and so I'd love to have a full vo video on tour. You know, if I find one that's listed, that's a great idea, Bryce. I'll go out and check that thing out for you. Um, rentals. Rental listing. Now, I know that 67% of you uh, watching this watch this on your phone, and there's no way you can read this, so I'll read it for you. It says, new rental listings are arriving thick and fast now. The count over the past four weeks is 31% higher than this time last year. However, they're getting leases signed pretty quickly. The number of active listings is only 0 0.06 higher than this time last month. What should be more concerning to landlords is this. Active listings are up 44%. The average list price has dropped from $1.80 to $1.69 over the last month. That's a fall of 6%. That's pretty significant. The average lease price per square foot being asked was $1.99 this time last year, so it's fallen 15% in 12 months. These are starting to look like significant changes in directions. That is if anything, will start backing off on investor interest. So that's a number to watch. You'll see more of that in rentals than you will in the resale market. You'll see the banners on the type of, on the sides of the buildings. First month free, stuff like that. When you start seeing that, eh, are we at the top of the market? No, not yet. And I'm going to show you why we're not there yet. Here's our number of active listings uh, measured daily. You can see they're going up. 
but they've been up here in 2021 and 2021 prices were going up like crazy there right so that has not changed enough yet to affect pricing and this is the Cromford demand index and I picked three cities Phoenix Mesa and Chandler and 100 is considered balanced demand or normal demand and you can see that we're rocking around 80 90 97 so demand is low quite simply because there's just nothing out there for them to buy but when you look at this low demand you go oh, think here we go well we had low demand last year uh chandler 82 and yet the prices have gone up 50 percent in two years so that's something to watch uh we already took a look at uh, mortgage applications but look at this interest rate today 5.08 percent so where's it going to go well hopefully we'll be talking to pat about that uh on friday at three o'clock i may be running a little bit later so i'll let everybody know um because I kind of want to know what the options are now. If we're sitting here at 5.08, um, is that pricing out of the market? <clears throat> are there adjustable rate mortgages, such as a seven-year note, that might start to look more appealing now? I'm not sure. Uh, Jackie says, that goes right with the feel I stated of investors seeming to be slightly less in the last few weeks. Yeah, they're seeing these same numbers, um, and they're saying, well, maybe we're getting just a tad bit saturated. Uh, Keto Man, Rick, jobs claims dropped 166,000 from 202,000 consensus. That means more people are working than expected. Lots of info. You know, a lot of chatter about a recession coming as well, too. We do have the inverted yield curve, so it's going to be a very wild year. Now, the central bank did come out yesterday. Well, they released their minute notes, and the minute notes said they're going to be selling uh, treasuries to the tune of 95 billion a month uh, and that's their cap so they're going to start working their way up to 95 billion um, starting in may they're not unloading mortgage-backed securities yet which will have more of an impact on interest rates <clears throat> and now to put that into perspective in the heat of all of this when they were trying to inject liquidity they were buying 120 billion dollars a month in treasury so now they're going to sell back 95 billion it's a big long complicated mess and it's way above my pay grade but what remains to be seen is as they do this and as they unwind they call it other people call it they're taking the punch bowl away from the party what's the impact will we see an immediate impact on economic activity will rates go up so high that real estate really kind of grinds to a halt and if that's the case and especially since you're coming up on midterms uh, maybe they're going to end up pulling back and going oh we came in too hard too fast they're in a pickle my friends they're really in a pickle on how they're going to get us into a what they call a soft landing they pull back too hard on their support <clears throat> everything goes to hell in the handbasket and that's what really everybody's looking um uh, Bryce says rates haven't stopped us, but they've made us more creative and all but guaranteed our first investment house probably won't be in Arizona unless demand drops. Demand is dropping, but not in all price points. <clears throat> demand is dropping between 400 and 600,000. Beyond that, demand is going strong. What we are seeing, and this is interesting, this is a new development that's going to be out in Mesa on Power Road. That Superstition Springs Mall that's kind of a ghost town. They're going to scrape that bad boy and they're going to put in housing that's a trend this is out of dallas we're seeing a lot of that you ever wonder what they're going to do with the malls the uh mall up on cactus which is called the paradise valley mall that's already been scraped they're putting in a whole development up there of residential homes uh retail restaurants so the land is not going unused this one here says a <clears throat> 110 million dollar apartment community and it'll take the place of retail space on 1445 South Power Road. Uh, it's power to 60. And it said the first units are scheduled to be delivered in early 2024. Now, if you know the Valley at all, you know we've got the Chandler Mall down there on Chandler Boulevard and, and the 101 Freeway that has Nordstrom's closed, Sears is closed, I think Macy's is closed. Um, they're going to have to do something with that. <clears throat> this might be another idea but then again you just saw some numbers where you know lease prices are coming down and that area of Chandler's pretty doggone saturated with uh with apartments so that might not be the ideal location but again uh, just another example of something that's above my pay grade <coughs> a lot of comments here this morning thank you um uh good morning and 
Keto Man says, you're correct with the midterms coming up soon, but I project any recession will occur after then. People vote with their wallet. No job, no vote. So I'm not concerned until 2023. Multifamily under 500,000 is virtually non-existent, sadly, in Arizona. Yeah, it is. It's um, What's really tough right now is trying to find a condo. And uh, if you're trying to buy a condo, uh, just to get your hands on something, um, you're getting slapped down like day one. There's uh, um, 10 offers before you even get in your car to go look at it. And that is... That's going to continue because the cash flow on condos is still pretty good. You've also heard me talk. I'm a little concerned about some of the older condos, and I caution you to make sure that you know going in the percentage of non-owner occupied that people that own these and use them as rentals so that they don't get such a large percentage that they vote to buy you out and convert the whole thing to an apartment complex. Um, that's, that's a danger. And that's an Arizona law that exists that, uh, is problematic. Usually you see it in the condos that are built in the eighties and nineties. Um, so people did not do a good job of keeping the non-owner occupied uh, <clears throat> below a certain percentage. If it gets too high, then it's no longer warrantable by FHA and you can't get an FHA loan for it. Um, two of my coworkers right now experiencing scary roof issues at their condos. Yep. There you go. The budget is supposed to budget for future roof repairs. And what happened was during the meltdown in 2008, a lot of these HOA budgets got destroyed. So they didn't make maintenance. And this is where that new FHA or Fannie Mae uh, law came out that said um, in order for them to write the insurance on that mortgage, these condo associations have to fill out a deferred maintenance form. In other words, they've got to line out what have you worked on? When was the last time you worked on the roof? Is there anything that you skipped? That can slow down the purchase process. They haven't implemented it yet. They're talking about doing it on June 1st. But imagine this. You went out, you bought a condo, you paid for the inspection. Okay, looks good. Now you paid for the appraisal. Great. Now you're waiting for that form from the HOA that got sent out to come back. It may add a three-week wait time to that purchase of your condo. And after you've already shelled out that money, they may say, ah, they haven't done a good job on their deferred maintenance. So they're trying to get that cleaned up a little bit, trying to streamline it. They get it. They understand it in the industry, but it might be a problem. They're trying to, like anything else, when they announce to say we're coming out with a June 1st, the industry comes up and goes, whoa, give us time to adjust to this. And uh, Jackie says, I just came across one that was 70%. I had to inform the listing agent. Kind of scary. At 75%, Jackie, boom. They're out. You're out. They're going to buy that whole complex. Uh, what amount appreciation do you think Arizona will see by 2023? Smack, smack. I have no idea. I don't. At our current rate, if you look at January, February, and March, if we were to maintain that current rate, our appreciation for this year would be 39%. I don't see that happening, but I also don't think anything's changing right now that's going to bring it below 20% for this year. 2023? All depends on rates. All depends on that supply and demand. Now, <clears throat> why don't I go out and predict and tell you what I think? Well, because I don't know. I honestly don't know. Realtor.com said that rates by the end of 2022 were going to be 3.47. So there you go. Zillow said we were going to be up 16% this year. We're killing that number already people also said when zillow decided that they were going to sell their homes and get out of the home buying business that they saw numbers we didn't see and therefore a crash was coming and you can see that none of that was true at all they're dumping a lot of their holdings right now and they're selling them as bulk rentals they're saying here you know take these 10 homes and they're getting rid of them and they're doing it and hiding the sales price they are doing what's called uh Oh, gosh, what the heck is the name of it? Um, article Exemption B7. And it said that would only apply if investors were subsidiaries of Zillow. So you don't know what price they're selling them. Now, these uh, investors that they're selling to them, they might be subsidiaries of Zillow, but everything's kind of kind of hidden. When we look at the affidavit of sales right now, on April 5th, there were 11,000 382 closed sales, that's down 5% from last year. Uh, new homes were down 11% compared to last year, mostly. 
because they're just not getting them built. They can't get the materials. There were 9,824 resale closings, down 4% from last year. The median sales price was up 29% from 365000 in March 2021. New home median sales price was up 27% versus last year. And the resale home median price up 29%. Basically, it's saying supply chain issues are still preventing home builders from closing as many homes as they wish. And work in projects in progress remains very high. So we're still seeing prices go up. We're seeing builders trying to catch up and uh, they're struggling. But where they aren't struggling now is they were really lagging behind in their median price increasing. They were going up slower than the resale market. Looks to me like they've solved that issue. So um, right now, the numbers that I really want you to concentrate on are the ones that I showed you earlier. Pending listings. Is that number going down? I want you to concentrate on contingencies. Before anybody reduces their price, they're going to start accepting offers that are contingent upon the sale of the home. And you're going to start seeing more closing cost contributions. That, all of those three things, are going to happen before you see price decreases. Now, you're going to see a reduction in the acceleration of prices as rates go up. So, in other words, we're going up at 29%. Now, maybe we're only going to go up 10. Maybe we're only going to go up 5. So, we're just going to have to continue to watch it and see what happens. But those three numbers, try to stay on top of them. Right now, as you look at our supply, we're still historically low. And, and I don't see anything in the short to midterm right now that tells people, well, I better dump my home. People are just going to sit on their hands. They're not going to list their home. There's no reason to list your home. You've got a fixed mortgage. The rate's really low. Why move? Now, if you want to buy and you're getting kind of priced out, I guess we just kind of have to wait and see if the bidding wars uh, kind of subside a little bit. It's hard to tell. The Fed's manipulation of the falsely lower interest rates caused this price spike, and the rising interest rates have caused prices to fall. Prices aren't going to fall until inventory comes up. Rates and pricing are 100% correlated in all markets. I agree, Matt. And they may cause prices to fall, but before they fall, you're going to have to see pending listings going up, contingencies going up, and inventory greatly outpacing sales. Right now, there's only a difference of 500 units between the seven-day moving average of homes coming on and homes going under contract. 500 units isn't going to move the bar at all. So those are the numbers that that gap has to change. Will it? Probably. When? Don't know, but those are numbers that we're going to watch. So I'm going to try to be on tomorrow at 3 o'clock. Don't forget to press that like button this morning so that your cell phone battery will last all day. And I hope a lot of you that pressed the like button the other day to stop your neighbor's dog from barking, I hope that worked. Take on the day. Hopefully I'll see you tomorrow at 3 o'clock. See ya.